Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel and today I'm doing another interview. My guest today is in a My guest today is a professional musician and they competed on The Voice as well. And today they're gonna come on and tell us a little bit more about themselves and their career. So today Peter will be joining me. Hi, well I'm Peter Donegan, a British Americana slash country artist, singer, songwriter, and um, I'm here to have a chat with you, Charlie. Thank you so much for coming, Peter. So today we're going to be talking about your music career. And my first question is, when did you first get into the music world? I don't remember a time that I wasn't, um, because with dad being who dad was, being Lonnie Donegan, um, I was born into it. I was actually born while my dad was touring. I was only born in the UK because because my dad was actually performing in the West End at the time. We were living in California in Lake Tahoe. So, I mean, that was that was my big introduction was <laughs> from, from a newborn sitting live on, you know, on the side of the stage watching dad go for it. Oh, that's super cool, like how you were born straight into music. And can you remember like the first audition you did? I, I, I can remember the first like amateur production one I took myself for. There was a local theatre and I went down to audition for a musical play called Carrots. Um, I didn't want to particularly go into the musical side of things, but I thought, you know, well, I'm going to learn at least what not to do, I suppose. Um, so <laughs> I went down there and I got the lead part. I got the part of Carrots, which was nice. Um, but then after that, I think uh, my dad decided to try and take me for auditions for Oliver in the West End when it was at the London Palladium. And I got through to the to the last auditions for that one. And then that's when it didn't work out. So <laughs> I got, I was almost there, like this much. Yeah, almost there. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for you. So one big moment in your career was The Voice. So how did you kind of get to find out about that? And what was it like actually auditioning to be on TV? That was a weird experience. I was, I didn't um, actually, uh, you know, did like, what's the word for it? Sign up to do the auditions. Um, I tried it once before, maybe they kept my email in the, in the database, um, but I was on my way down to a songwriting retreat in Glastonbury and I got a phone call and it says, hello, this is Alicia from The Voice. And I was like, The Voice? It says, um, yeah, yeah, we've seen your YouTube videos and uh, we really like to see if, if you'd like to come and try out for The Voice because we'd really like to have some people from that country music genre seeing as it seems to be growing in the UK. And I was like, mm, OK, cool. So that's kind of where it went from. So I, I missed that preliminary audition and went straight to a producer audition, which was nice. Um, although a little bit scary because it's, they go, it's just, you know, no pressure on you. It's just you, the producer and a vocal coach. And I'm like, yeah, that's not any pressure. <laughs> you know, I prefer if it was a hundred people than one. Uh, so yeah, I was very nervous, went in and it's because it's like four or five rounds of auditions before you get anywhere close to a TV camera, you know? Um, and it, I have to say that they tricked me so nicely on that show. Um, you know, they were, they were, even when I wasn't on the show anymore and it was still running, they were still calling me up and seeing how I was and checking in. And, and it, was, it was a really lovely experience overall. Yeah, that does sound like a lovely experience and it sounds like a, quite a crazy journey to get there, but it sounds super fun as well. So do you have any advice to people who want to get into music? Yeah, um, make sure, th this is the only thing I can tell you. If you feel that there is anything else that you could do than music, then don't do music. Because this is something that you have to throw your complete heart and soul in and you have to know there is nothing else I can do except for music. Because you have to love it. If you, um, It's one of those things because there are going to be times when even for the hardcore of us, like me, who will grit and grin through everything and I've seen my dad go through it too um you're gonna have a couple of those gigs where you go that's it I'm done you know because there are some gigs where the audience aren't listening or they hate you and they're trying to get you off stage all of those things can happen to the absolute best of us and it doesn't actually mean you're bad it just means that you've got a really bad audience you know um it's yeah, and those gigs are the ones that build your character. But if you if you think that, oh, yeah, I'm going to try music, you won't get through things like that. 
Yeah, that's some great advice and I definitely agree. I think you shared some great stuff there, so thank you. So you've shared the stage with legends such as Van Morrison, Tom Jones, Joe Cocker and Billy Bragg. So what is it like working with those amazing musicians? Uh, I'm very blessed, very lucky. I mean, that's obviously because of dad as well and who dad was uh, that I came to work with these people. Um, and it's, I mean, these guys are, you know, the same as all of us. They put their pants on one leg at a time like the rest of us. The only difference is they go on and they've made hit records. Uh, but uh, it, it's great because, I mean, you get to learn from these people, um, you know, who are absolute masters of their craft. And, you know, it's, I, I don't know another way of saying it really, other than it's an absolutely awesome experience. Yeah, it does sound like an awesome experience. And were you kind of, did you kind of know the artists before you perform with them? Most of the time, yes. Tom Jones, no. Uh, Tom knew Dad, and he'd met my mum numerous times down the line. Uh, but I, the, the one and only time that I've actually been with Tom Jones on stage was as everybody saw on The Voice. Yeah, that's super cool. And how did it feel to be, I, I'm assuming you were mentored by Tom Jones from what I can remember. So what was it kind of like having that experience as well? Um, well, I, I don't think I got through to the stages where they really mentored you um, because I only got as far as the battle round, you know, between myself and Dina. Um, so it was a, a lot of, you know, can we say that again? Let's stop, pause, we're going to get a different camera angle. Can you say that? Let's do this. You know, um, it, was a, it was a lot of that at that point in time, just a lot of filming. Um, you know, but there was a couple of nice moments backstage with Tom where, you know, it's, it's kind of silent. They're repositioning cameras and stuff and Tom just looks over and he says, uh, so how's your mother? I said, uh, she's all right. He said, you still living in California? I said, no, no, no. So she's up in the Northeast. All right. He said, oh, I'm back in Wales now as well. And I said, oh, that's nice. And Dina's next to me, not knowing any family connection, not knowing anything that's already happened in the round beforehand, because you don't know until it's aired. And she's going, didn't ask how my mother is. <laughs> You know, obviously not realising the connection which we had to tell her afterwards. Yeah, that's, thank you for sharing that story. And yeah, it's great like that you got on with him and everything. So have you always wanted to be a musician? I know earlier on you kind of said you were born into the world. Yeah, always. Um, you know, it was, it, it was something that I never thought anything else about. It was always assumed by myself that I would be in the music industry. Sometimes it was a case of which genre am I going to try and pick? Because to be honest with you, as a professional musician, you know, as a trained musician, I have a respect and a love for all genres. Anything from garage to classical to, you know, dubstep to country to, and, and I, I like it all. That's the thing, you know. Um, so that's why, I mean, I, I had to go down the country route of things because that's what I grew up listening to. That's where I felt at home within myself while I was performing it. And, you know, also I thought dubstep would, I'd, don't don't have the look for dubstep yeah and yeah it's great like that you've always loved it and everything and i think like the country music i was listening to some earlier and i have to say it is really good especially modern country uh because there's so many sub genres now because you've got country pop you know you've got outlaw country you there's even sort of like reggae genres of it, uh you know sub genres of it as well it branches out so so much yeah, definitely. I love how kind of like there's different parts of it now and it's like people like specific things as well. So I think that's really cool. So where do you see yourself in 10 years time? I'm already going great. <laughs> um, I'm taking it one day at a time. Um, I'm hoping seriously because the pandemic has obviously put, um, you know, the brakes on a lot of things. Uh, so I'm hoping to be touring full style again have you know more than a few albums under my belt and it'd be very nice to actually have a, a recording contract rather than being an independent artist being an independent artist is great especially to start off with you know because you have the freedom to be who you want to be and do what you want to do but it comes at a huge cost because you know which something that all of us have to do you have to become a photograph a photographic editor sometimes a photographer as well as a um producer uh, a band leader, um, you know, somebody in charge of your own PR. You have to learn how PR works, social media manager. There's so much stuff, which is why if you do get picked up by a record label, then they can handle those things. Yeah, definitely. And that sounds really cool. And uh, yeah, record labels sound like a really cool opportunity as well. So we were talking about kind of the audition process of The Voice earlier on, but what was it like actually being in front of the cameras and kind of the first couple rounds on TV? 
That was the most nervous I've ever been in my career. I've been doing this for 25 years. Um, and that was just a brand new experience for me. I'd never done reality TV. So there I am, you know, with my heart in my throat, seeing the back of those four chairs. The 200 people that are sitting behind that, that's easy. It was those four chairs, you know, and hopefully not the embarrassment of nobody turning around. Um, so it was it was terrifying, which is why it was so helpful that everybody, all the you know, the production crew and everybody was so nice. And I have to say all of the, the, the competitors, which I didn't feel that they were, we were just, you know, other people on the show and we were just enjoying each other's company. Um, it's why it was great to have that relationship too. Um, the second round was a bit more relaxed and uh, just was allowed to have a bit more fun with it backstage, which meant now when I stepped on stage in front of the cameras, you had more of a better feeling for it. I guess it's kind of like just getting used to it as well because the TV world sounds like a completely different like world to like going up on stage and doing live music I'm assuming. It is I mean I've been on TV shows before either with my dad or you know promoting other tours things like that you know with good uh, this morning when we did the Gloria Hunterford show we've done you know quite a few things I've been with my dad for the Des O'Connor show and that used to be around as well um, and that I find comfortable. That's absolutely fine. But it's I think because of the pressure that is put on you and the way it's built up. Because, I mean, I've been there since 7 a.m. And I didn't get to do my audition until 5 p.m. And I actually hadn't slept through nerves the last night. And I'd also done a gig the previous night. So I was pretty wiped <laughs> when it came to my audition. Yeah, well, that's a load of stuff that happened before the audition. Um, so in 2020, your latest single, Thank You, Texas, won awards for Best Male Vocalist and Best Original Song at the Texas Sound International Country Music Awards. So how did it feel for your single to win those? Great. It's the first awards that I've ever picked up for myself. Uh, I've picked up plenty of awards for Dad posthumously, you know. Um, but there they are. Oh, other hand. Oh, there. <laughs> Just behind me. Um, so, yeah, it was great. You know, a Best Male Vocalist, the Original Song of the Year. I think Original Song of the Year is the one that counts the most because Thank You, Texas is an original composition by myself with Jerry Serrano and Maddie Davis, who was actually from NBC's The Voice in the US. Uh, she got such a smoky voice. And unfortunately, due to the pandemic, she wasn't on the single with us because I, I really wanted her on there as well. Because she actually, even though she's from Texas, is based in Liverpool at the minute. So that would have been really, really cool. So, no, that felt awesome, you know, because it, it's getting recognition in a place that, I, you know, I really, really wanted it, you know, in the US, in Texas. It does sound such an like an incredible experience and in that it's great that you won that. So do you have any hobbies that run alongside music? Um, yes, I do. I can only think of the one. Because, I mean, my, most of my time is taken up, if it's not with music, it's being a dad, you know, because I have a, a six-year-old little man and uh, he takes up a lot of my time and, and I love it. Uh, but other than that, I'm very passionate about cooking. I can whip up a really good lasagna. Oh, that's super cool. Cooking's always really fun and that. So, yeah, that's great. So I have one more question for you, and this is always my favourite one, and is do you have any music stories from your career? Oh, I've got loads of them. Um... I tell you something, you always know somebody who's been in the business for a long time uh, and isn't like a newbie because we don't come into a room and go, oh, do you know I performed at the Royal Albert Hall? You know, oh, I was once on ITV. No, we don't do that. We go, have you ever done Biker and Heat and Social Media, Social Club? You know, and you tell the worst stories that you've ever had. Um, so do you want a worst one or a best one? <laughs> All right, worst one. Uh, there's a lot to pick from, but this one, because it kind of relates into the voice, I've, I mean, for years, you know, even when I do my own material, I always have a small section of the, of my set, which pays homage to dad. And I was doing this God awful club up in, I think it was Elgin in Scotland. And one of the things that was throwing me off was after every song, there was no response, no applause, no nothing. It was just silence. So after the first 45 minutes, you know, like the end of the first part of a football match, uh, DJ comes up to me and says, hey, they love you. I was like, what do you mean they love me? It's silent. He says, ah, exactly. He says, if, if they don't like you, he says, they just keep talking. I was like, oh, 
right okay so they don't clap oh no they've done a clap in here and i was like all oh, right fine so okay and yeah and as it went on i said um all right i'm gonna do uh, i'll never fall in love again just acoustically on the piano kind of like i did on, on the tv so in the middle of me singing this song bear in mind there's a lovely lad sitting in front of me and i found out that he's actually um mute and he's he's deaf as well but he was loving feeling the vibrations and loving the music and i, I was really liking performing to him because he was loving it and I'm looking at him and this little old lady comes walking across the dance floor all the way to the middle. And I'm going, you know, well, I've been in love so many times, thought I knew the score. And she comes to this lad, and she screams at him, she goes, have you seen your father lately? I'm going, oh, God. Of course, this is all anybody can hear, you know, you know fall in love. And I'm trying not to laugh. And she goes, I said have you seen your father lately? And I thought her eyes are going to pop out of her sockets. All right. Anyway, <laughs> and this kid's looking at her like this, you know, I'm thinking screaming at many louder is not going to help this. The poor lad doesn't, I can't hear anything, you know. And then this other lady came running across the dance floor, patted her on the back like this. And she's going, hey, you never can't hear him like this, you know. And she looks, she goes, all right. And she looks up at the stage and she goes, sorry. And then walks off and I'm going, Oh God, how do I keep singing? Um, so that's one of the bad ones. Um, well, one of the bad ones I can tell on, on, on you know, to the public. <laughs> um, and then I guess one of the best ones uh, is probably watching the reaction that we got in 2004 at the Albert Hall. We had a commemorative performance from my dad um you know the late Lonnie Donegan for those who don't remember and he inspired so many artists from most notably the Beatles the Rolling Stones Led Zeppelin all of these bands that wouldn't have existed if it wasn't for dad inspiring them to pick up a guitar in the first place and we had a lot of these people on the bill with us and watching all of them you know at the Albert Hall come on we had Roger Daltrey from The Who um Van Morrison was there we had Chaz and Dave Joe Brown um Mark Knopfler from Dire Straits, uh, all people you probably don't remember, Charlie. Uh, but <laughs> and then Joe Cocker, you know. Um, do you remember Joe Cocker, Charlie? Or? No, sorry. <laughs> you know songs like "You Can Leave Your Hat On." Yeah, I know. I yeah. recognise the songs. Yeah. 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 Well, Joe Cocker, and you know, "You Are So Beautiful to Me," you know, songs like that. Um, to watch Joe go for it, for instance, singing one of my dad's songs and watching the audience just erupt afterwards was absolutely fantastic. You know, and I was backing him on, on keyboard as well, so it was wonderful. Yeah, those are some lovely stories and thank you for sharing the good and the bad ones. They're definitely both really cool, especially like the worst one's quite really funny as well. And then the best one sounds just like such a, an amazing and honourable moment. So that's super cool. And I really appreciate you sharing them. No, no, the pleasure is all mine. I, I, there's, there's way more and I'm sure I could send you to sleep with all of them. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'm sure you've got loads. So we have come to the end of the interview now and it's been lovely finding out more about yourself and your career. So thank you so much for coming on. Oh, thank you very much, Charlie, for having me. You're most welcome. And also thank you to everybody who watched this interview. I hope you enjoyed it and found out a little bit more about Peter. And I hope you all stay safe and I'll see you next week for another interview. Bye, guys.